Hey, it's Captain Brian, and uh, it's middle of April on the northern Chesapeake, so we're getting ready to put the boat in the water pretty soon. Uh, it's still up on up in the yard here. Uh, I, I, the other the other day, I cut off the shrink wrap and hung the canvas, and uh, did some paint work before that, and uh, got to get ready to wash and wax the sides, which I won't be able to reach when I'm uh, in the water. And uh, but another thing I got to do is uh, protect against corrosion. Uh, so I don't know if you remember as a kid in science class, you may have you may remember a, uh, an experiment where you took two little pieces of metal, different kinds of metal, I think probably copper and tin, stuck them in the top of a cup full of salt water. And that made a simple battery well, I'll tell you what, you put a boat in the water, you get the same situation, You're, you become a battery. And uh, what, ha what happens if you recall that one piece of metal gets all deteriorated, denuded, pitted, uh, because the electrons are getting sucked out of it and replaced. So the same thing can happen to the metal on your boat, the, run the running gear underneath your boat. You've got different kinds of running, uh, you know, metal under there. You got steel shafts and bronze rudders and some boats have you know steel propellers etc and uh you know you don't want to have your metal running gear get uh, deteriorated so to protect against that you put a, what they call a less noble metal one that reacts more with the salt water uh and that, that's zinc and so you put you attach electrically a big hunk of zinc underneath the boat under the water line uh, and that takes the brunt of the deterioration so let's take a look at the zincs. The zincs can be attached pretty much anywhere. You know, here's these Mercru Mercruiser Bra Bravo 3s, which by the way are notorious or have been in the past for corrosion. Gal it's called galvanic corrosion or electrolysis. And you see here's a, a couple of zincs attached to the, the steering gear. Uh, you may see more attached to the trim gear. I don't see, oh, here you go, the, the trim uh, pumps. And, uh, you know, on my boat, I've got a couple of clamshells on the, attached to the trim tab. And I've got a big honking one back here. And you can see how it's all deteriorated. They say you want to replace it when it's about 50% left. But, uh, you know, and it looks like there's a lot left, but it's hard to tell how much mass is lost inside and everything. So after a couple of years, I'm gonna swap that baby out. So let's, let's, I'm gonna glove up and get to work. Laying down a couple pieces of cardboard to keep my butt from getting wet. And it also is more comfortable than having your butt right on the, on the cement. Here's what the new one looks like. It's a clamshell that's gonna go on the trim tab. And you see it's got a uh, Allen head holding it on there. So find out which Allen head fits it. That's the one. Let's take this puppy off. So you can you can see that it's, it's coming apart real easy. So you know it's definitely ready to be replaced. And you want this to be electrically connected to the rest of the boat. So you want to kind of clean up. So I got a little bit of sandpaper here. Just make sure. Doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly clean. And by the way, it should not be painted there. Perfect. A little brush. Just make sure that I'm going to make a decent connection. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, but it shouldn't be terrible either. Okay. All right, I got it on there nice and snug. Notice that the tail end of the screw is sticking up, so it's not down here in the water flow, creating extra drag, right? This is, that's why this is rounded and smooth. So the water flows over it, and we're not s slowing down the boat any, uh, you know, so make sure you put it on the right way. 
let's move on to the next one. Get this on here nice and snug. You want it to make good contact. And you don't want it coming loose during the season. All right, that looks a little better, huh? So that job's done. And, uh, oh, by the way, this guy, this Bravo 3, he's even got a zinc uh, on the hub of the prop there. So he's got a set there, a set on the steering arm, and a set on the pistons for the trim. So they're really trying to protect these. Like I said, these Bravo 3s really had a, a problem because there's a lot of stainless steel in the dual props. And then there was uh, some sort of, um, I don't know if it's aluminum or what, the, in the casing, and the casing would corrode. And uh, you know, this caused the seals to go bad. You know, there's drive oil in here. You get seawater in that drive oil and then it's, that oil's not gonna work too good and uh you got real problems so uh, this one's looking pretty good i don't know if they've improved over the years probably have but uh yeah that's it's a notorious problem for this kind of drive my drives don't really suffer very much from this um, but uh you know i've got stainless steel uh shafts and bronze propellers and and rudders and steel trim tabs but all the same you want to protect the boat you know there's seawater going up in the boat too so you know these these uh um through hole bolts are connected to the ground inside the boat so you know we're protecting from seawater that's you know going through the, the raw water side of the cooling systems and everything as well so uh, this is important so uh, that job's done next thing i got to do is start cleaning and waxing the sides